I'm involved in uh, programs here at Fleming College as well as uh, other other uh, programs with the youth. Uh, out of Trent University, a program called TRAX, uh, which uh, stands for Trent University Anishinaabe Cultural Knowledge and Science, as well as uh, uh, a language uh, on the land language uh, program and uh, camp out of uh, the Durham District School Board, and uh, also working with teachers in, in that school board and, and other facilitators of, of uh, the Indigenous portfolio in that school board as well. We work actually in, with uh, Durham, like we have, there was like a newborn that was there in our summer program, spring summer program, and some some as old as uh, well some retired teachers and individuals uh, who are it was a family group so we had uh, grandparents we had parents children and then the youngest was was a newborn who was only a week old that came to our program so it, we were really trying to promote uh, families and and Anishinaabe and uh, that would be a whole family experience that would go from our particular experience uh, gatherings uh, on the land uh, at an outdoor education center and conservation uh, center north of uh, Port Perry and uh, from that experience into the homes that that way the language would become useful for them and, and those experiences that uh, they would have collectively as well and uh, we, we thought in that program it would be important not just for the students to be exposed to the language in Anishinaabe in, in, in the program uh, but to include the, the families, the parents, the grandparents, and that way they could share it and take it home and uh, make it useful for themselves. And uh, uh, with tracks, we work with uh, different age groups, as young as uh, junior kindergarten, right up to high school, and we do some uh, instruction even with uh, uh, future teacher candidates. So we work with uh, uh, college and university student age as well in uh, that program we also do mentorship where uh, we had we have students who have been within our program for about five or six years and we uh, you know they begin to become older and older so we get them to mentor younger uh, students who are part of our program and teach them you know a little bit of uh, uh, or give them that space to do some instruction and teaching for younger students to say, you know, this is highly valuable perspective when it comes to uh, Indigenous science uh, and, and Western science and weaving the two. And uh, so they get to do some mentorship and leadership as well within that program. And here at Fleming College, we do uh, with uh, college-age students. And you know, we have a lot of students who are as young as 17 and 18 coming right out of high school. And we have some returning students and mature students who are uh, uh, students uh, that are looking for uh, uh, another option for a career, so they have come back to school, and some of them are, you know, in their 50s and 60s. I would start with my own personal intention, uh, why I, you know, want to work with these programs or, you know, I always find the opportunity to engage with uh, learners and, and and students or educators and uh, be a part of the, uh, the learning experiences uh, in my family like uh, I've had the opportunity uh, to be exposed to uh, my own culture, uh, Anishinaabe culture, Anishinaabe language and not everyone has that exposure or, or had that opportunity to know about it so uh, there's a little bit of a responsibility to share that and, and to promote it to make it accessible for learners, for the youth especially, and uh, that's where a lot of my intention lies is that uh, when growing up, the individuals took the time to uh, teach me or expose or take the time to uh, show me these things. So I, I kind of feel a responsibility to continue that as well and uh, connect to the youth and make it available and accessible for them. and. and they know there's a value in it, and I want to reaffirm that or, or uh, empower that, that everything that they're being exposed to or that they're knowing is, is going to 
uh, be an important factor to themselves as well as to the next generation and how they carry it. So my own intention uh, with working in those programs is to uh, really inspire that that uh, that indigenous youth or indigenous people we have a lot to offer and uh, so I, I bring that to all the programs that I work with uh, is that passion or that motivation that I have responsibility that I carry uh, to share those things and uh, you know, to make it meaningful or rational uh, to take out some of the misunderstandings or mysticisms of, of the way our culture might be and uh, then more specifically, like in, in Durham District School Board, we the, the intention there is to uh, make the language useful, make Anishinaabe and Moen useful to, to all ages. Uh, and so that way they can carry it uh, outside of the home as well as understand it uh, and have some experience with it, that the living aspect of the language. So. Uh, in my family, that's one thing that they really promote and, and speak about. So I, I, I try and mimic that or try and align myself with that, that uh, importance that the language shouldn't always be translated uh, into another language or that we should learn in Shnabemu and as a second language that we should embody it and understand the life of the way the language is, is meant to be or the way our ancestors had spoken the language and what I've seen it do for for the youth is it inspires them and, and you know they've had inclinations or intuition that that there's more to who we are as people uh, culturally and in terms of our, our identity so inside of them it kind of it inspires them to say yeah I knew there was more and now they're, they're being exposed to it and here at Fleming we work with indigenous and non-indigenous students and so we begin to you know uh, try to empower or attempt to empower the student to uh, have uh, a way of connecting with indigenous knowledge and indigenous peoples lands and territories as well as creation uh, utilizing an indigenous way of knowing or, or pedagogy or uh, uh, philosophy that uh, you know all all life entities are equal and just as important as themselves and uh, that you know that we are able to do what we can do uh, because of those relationships we have with each other with our communities with our knowledge and, and with the environment so we try and promote this uh, this importance of uh, honoring you know all of those relationships and the things that uh, have made it possible uh, that that we can do what we can do uh, something as easy as the relationship to uh, you know to the air and to the water to the plants to the animals and, and to each other to our families and our communities and to honor those relationships and uh, to be motivated then to uh, treat everyone you know as equals or as living beings and uh, to inspire or further inspire some of their their passions he had Fleming like we work with uh, about 13 14 uh, different programs where they it's mandatory that they have to take uh, an indigenous perspective uh, course and and uh, then they begin to have the the historical contexts and understanding of uh, how history has evolved and how the relationship between uh, indigenous and non-indigenous peoples in Canada has evolved and, and why there is complications today and then we we get them to really be critical in thinking of how to be proactive and, and how to utilize their own positionality their own gifts and abilities to uh, work towards making better relationships uh, better choices more informed choices based upon that context and, and engage with uh, within their career field in, in a better way so uh, really try and give them those uh, tools and uh, those and further develop those gifts that they've been given and passions whether it be in the helping roles or in the environmental roles and in the, in the justice careers that they're going to be uh, going into 
and uh, at tracks again it's kind of a little bit of all of that where you know we really want to reinforce this value of of indigenous uh, science base and the science base that uh, indigenous peoples have long been employing uh, uh, rational methods of of uh, hypothesizing things and theorizing and things and putting things into practice that you know we were able to, to quantify some of the qualities that uh, that uh, is a, a scientific inquiry we have a very rational way of connecting with the lands with the resources and, and those relationships and to de demystify those things for the youth to say you know there are real uh, importance to these relationships and, and knowledges that we carry and uh, and based upon their experiences you know many of the indigenous students that come to tracks like they they carry this stuff already so we want to reinforce that we want to uh, give them opportunities to grow their experiences that they already have based upon you know their knowledge that may have come from their own families their own experiences in their communities or their own pursuit of indigenous knowledge as well so we you know really try and harness that to say you are highly valuable in the knowledge that you carry as well as as youth you know you you're uh, have a high value to to grow and to share your knowledge, to pursue that knowledge, and and uh, to inspire them that you know whatever they set their mind to, uh, they can accomplish, and to know that you know more now more than ever we need we need indigenous knowledge to begin to uh, to be a part of uh, society and. Uh, that everyone begin to see the value and the use to honor all of our relations or an idea of Nui Kanagana or a Kinomo Shin or an exercise what Mino Bamatsuin really mean in terms of responsibility to, to the self, uh, to each other and to the to our families, to our communities and you know, to all people and uh, to the lands, to the resources uh, that Know, there, there is a science base there that says we we can't go without any of those those entities or with without any of those webs of relationships that were all counterparts in, in the envisionment of of creation or in the envisionment of the intention of creation and a term that we use is uh, in promote is which really describes that you know we're, we're a part of the balancing act of creation humans uh, in relation to to all of creation so we're we're a part of that intention so we, we need to continue to be and exist and, and promote well-being and uh, I would really speak to you again like uh, you know being a youth and growing up is uh, not always feeling valued or honored you know and, and or having the confidence that uh, the knowledge and experiences that I carried were not always promoted, and, but I, luckily I, I had the privilege of having individuals who did that and took the time to do that for me. So, you know, uh, especially for our youth, and uh, they really need that. They need that that space. They need that opportunity to know that you know they're highly valued. They're, they're gifts to to our to our people, and uh, yeah, their their minds and their perspectives very uh, of course uh, part of that that diversity of how they are experiencing and seeing things and uh, you know they're part of again the, the the energy or the potential and the potency of, of how the next generation uh, uh, will be exposed to indigenous knowledge and, and to that engaging with all other knowledges that that, that we see today uh, an evolution or acculturation that occurs to exposure of other ways of knowing or uh, other methods other scientific inquiries that enhance each other so an idea that we we use is the idea of the two i see and I, I like including that that idea of periphery which uh, you know is utilizing as many methods or as with many ways of knowing and describing uh, as as much as possible to embody that to fully understand and uh, make true uh, or uh, uh, 
you know, the method of Ndeb uh, Win, uh, which describes, you know, that people uh, understand the truth based upon their own experiences, uh, but then they're able to share their own truths and, and help other people see the way they might see it. So uh, having a grander way of describing it and making it rational or sharing experiences with other people then really adds to that uh, truth and, and truth seeking or knowing and learning and the methods of learning and actually seeing when you're seeing something and knowing what you're actually seeing and uh, and not missing it because uh, like like uh, in my experience learning about the lands and the resources and specifically about medicines, you know, I, uh, th there would be a lot of times when I would be walking on the land or in the bush where, you know, I didn't, I wasn't able to identify so many plants and so many trees and, and I would walk by them and not know the identity of what I was walking through or, or who I was interacting with and getting to know now, you know, the, uh, the Nishnabe names for plants, Nishnabe names for for animals and entities in creation, you know, and really taking the time to say, well, why is this plant or why is this entity called this? And and then, you know, those those interactions and that rapport building with those landscapes and those specific entities, uh, they reveal themselves to you and, and then you get to see like this is the this is what they're revealing in terms of their identity, and you get to know those plants. So anytime you pass by uh, a plant that you've built a rapport with and got to know and interact with, then you're not gonna just pass by it. You're gonna you're gonna want to say something, or you're gonna want to you know uh, acknowledge that plant and that entity. And it's same with people. The more you interact with people and get to know people, then then you're gonna want to you know, share some energy or share some words, uh, share some interactions with with even uh, people and entities so that they'll, we'll know what we're seeing uh, when we're exposed to or we'll know what kindness and, and uh, care or responsibility looks like. Uh, hopefully inspire others to, you know, want to know about our culture, to see the value in our in our culture and practices, our ways of knowing, our science based to know that it's it's real. You know, it's it's not uh, it's not something that is stuck in the past or stuck in myst mysticism. That it is highly valuable. Uh, within the institution, like we are required to do certain evaluation pieces that you know I I try and though to employ even within the institution. Uh, Anishinaabe pedagogy or or akinomage uh, 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 format of teaching of putting it all together and so I use different formats and it kind of would be uh, uh, it, it would be uh, unrealistic to ask any student okay now it's time for test it's time for a test and I'm going to test you on you know what our experiences were what I had said or I want you to, you know, uh, do it exactly the way I did it, and, or tell it the way I told it, and or reiterate it the way I had done it, and, and that would be, you know, really uh, undermining the the whole approach of uh, promoting diversity and honoring the the, own, the student's own uh, perspective. So, uh, the way I would uh, be, you know. Uh, I guess an indicator that the work that I'm doing is is useful is is uh, sometimes having conversations with with some of the students and asking explicitly like how are you experiencing it, uh, what have you been uh, picking up, you know, what could I do better and or what could we we do better uh, within the classroom or within our interactions, you know, who would we uh, need as well, you know, outside of our 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 uh, our group and and outside of our classroom that would be useful or are there places where we need to go and all the answers kind of give me indicator that you know that that it is driving their motivation to learn more or that you know there are things that they're picking up and uh, you know and I get them to even talk with each other to say 
you know, because uh, they might be reluctant to, you know, to tell me exactly how they're experiencing it, or they may not want to give me the criticisms all the time. So, I, you know, I get them to to talk with each other or or do different means of of evaluating it, maybe anonymous uh, kind of uh, suggestions that they could give to me. That way, they would feel most comfortable sharing. Uh, the other indicators, like there's so many stories I can share where uh, uh, I've seen, you know, the effect of, of a student engaging with the Nishnab Amwin or engaging with the lands and the resources uh, and, and with our, our culture or with our practices, with our sciences where, you know, you just see it on their faces or in their demeanor, in their body language. Where they begin to open up, they begin to be excited, you know, and and I know uh, it reminds me when I see students going through that or or uh, individuals going through that, because I know it, that's what it's done for me as well as that it has motivated me, inspired me, grounded me, you know. I found healing in it. I found uh, inspiration in it, and and I see it it happening to other people uh, as well, and and. I, it reminds me, you know, and it motivates me to keep going that, that it is helping. Uh, one of my favorite stories uh, that, I, that I like to share that I ask permission for from, from one of uh, uh, my students where uh, she, she, she never talked and uh, she, she had been someone who was in, in uh, the child welfare system and had uh, not too much exposure to Anishinaabe culture uh, in any means. And uh, many people who worked with her and even other peers, they said, yeah, she would hardly ever talk or hardly ever, ever say anything. And uh, But we knew that, you know, she was highly intelligent, very good at school. And uh, when we were having our class, uh, uh, language Anishinaabe went on the land or Akinamoshin, uh, she began to utilize the language to uh, find her voice and begin to speak. Uh, it started out as simple introductions and, and uh, introducing herself to uh, uh, getting a handle on other words that were useful in, in conversation to uh, other words that are useful in, in applying or, or identifying you know, the experiences that that she had with the landscape or with the environment. And uh, she began to share those things. And after uh, five weeks of interaction, uh, I didn't get to experience this, but I only heard from her teachers that uh, she presented and introduced herself uh, at a, in a class assembly to, to uh, her peers in, in the language. And uh, it totally astonished her peers and, and other uh, uh, teachers that that uh, she had begin to f begun to found, find her voice and then share it and be very proud of it. And, and she would tell people with, with clear confidence that she was an, uh, an Anishinaabe individual and uh, begin to carry it like uh, with confidence and, and tell people explicitly. So, you know, the, sort of those stories or those examples, you know, it, it's uh, not just about how many words she had remembered or how many things she could, you know, translate or, or how many ideas in English she could bring into an Anishinaabe perspective. Uh, but it was really seeing the, the value of, of how she carried it and what it meant for her and, and how the language, you know, connected to her. So I would say, you know, that, that's sort of uh, beyond test or beyond test scores and, and uh, the way someone might have a great percentage or whatever it might be, uh, that's sort of how I would evaluate is what it has meant for the person and how, you know, it has in, uh, ignited their own fire or fueled their own fire, their own uh, motivation. And, uh, you know, it reminds me of uh, a term my, my grandma used to say to me every morning. She, was, she would say a command. She would say, and, uh, she, and I, you know, she would say every now and then, in English after she'd say, find the reason, you know, to light your own fire and find find a reason to light your own passion or motivation to get up in the morning, she would say, right? And 
uh, and there would be times where I wouldn't feel very, you know, I'd be tired or I couldn't didn't sleep very well, and she'd say, no, I already told you, uh, that uh, you have to get up, that you have to find the, the thing inside that, uh, that, that you're motivated to, to do what you're intended to do. So, yeah, that's, that's the way I would see it uh, for, for the students is that, you know, that they're inspired, they continue to, to feel the, you know, the motivation and continued motivation to, uh, to take life and, and to love their life and, and to be motivated to uh, expand their gifts and abilities and make choices based upon, you know, their, uh, their, their growth. So, Growing up, I always thought, you know, the, what would make things perfect? I always thought, you know, what would make things, you know, in the best situation, the best possibility, and, and just letting that dream go through, like, in the best case scenario, you know, how would it look, and what would it be? And uh, another thing I would think, well, my grandpa, my grandpa David told me, he said, uh, David, oh, he'd say, you know, we shouldn't really divide ourselves or look at at each other as different you know he, he would say that we're all human and we all have a responsibility as humans to know what life is about uh, based upon you know our own truths and and we should know uh, what our responsibility to life is and he would say that's the only thing we really own in life is our responsibility and carrying out our responsibility and he would tell me, uh, you know, uh, that that's what connects us all is this this way we carry out life and, and the exercise of life and and uh, expanding how we would carry out our responsibility to the life within us, to the life around us, the life that comes to us and throughout us, and the life that we put out into creation. And uh, he would tell me that. That's what uh, that's what it means to be an indigenous person, an Anishinaabe person, or a person in relation to other people and other life forms, uh, individuals that we might describe as other than human entities uh, within creation. And it reminds me of a term that someone had mentioned er uh, recently: is the term uh, that Anishinaabe used for Canada is Akanaade. Or akana ode, and uh, what the way we might apply that term uh, as Canadians or as uh, individuals who carry akana ode is that uh, everything we would do would be based upon uh, our heart ability, our gift ability, our intuition, but as well as our rational being. And everything that we do and carry out would be to promote life and to empower life. Uh, not just for ourselves, but for you know all of creation and for the continuation of of life and the, and we see that within the term Anishinaabe, we see that in the term Akinawashin and the pursuit of knowing. Uh, we see that in the, in the term Mino Bamadzuin or in, in in the term Nui Kanagana. It all is this pursuit to uh, uh, be reciprocal. And, uh, to creation and what creation has granted us and so I would say in terms of education uh, my hope is that uh, there would be a time when everyone would be confident in knowing the life about the life that they carry and the ability of the life that they carry in relation to all of creation and and the effects of everything that we do uh, has an effect on the next generations, both human and other than human beings, and that we would be mindful and, and know that there is a responsibility to uh, be kind, be gentle, respectful, reciprocal uh, to, the, to those ones that are not yet here, those ones that are yet to come, and uh, knowing that uh, everything that we do, someday the next generation will inherit and there will be this, in, you know, uh, energy uh, that will be transferred to those generations, and and that's what I see in that term that we describe as ourselves here within this nation as Can Canadians, 
and and uh, it's not a bad translation or pronunciation of it is and uh, what that responsibility carries is that we would be mindful of ourselves in relation to all of creation you know and and, and that we would honor that relationship that we would not be here or we would not be who we are if it wasn't for our relationships to our families, our communities, you know, our, our people uh, and, and our neighbors uh, in our territories, uh, creation, all the entities of creation, you know, the land, the, the resources, the plants, the animals, all the elements and all that knowledge that, that they bring and share. And, uh, you know, the way they govern themselves in terms of natural laws, you know, they're basing it upon their own ability and their free will. And so uh, that, that would inform everything that we do. So uh, that's what I, that would be in my, my sort of envisionment of uh, the perfect uh, kind of educational outcome is that everyone begins to either know or, or is in a process of developing and being critical to inform what their responsibility is to themselves and, and to each other and to all of creation and, and the idea of Nui Kanagana, uh, you know, that we're, we're all related, we're all connected, we all have this responsibility to each other and, and uh, not just to us here in this time or in this moment, but uh, the continuation and perpetuity of, of time and that energy that is going to be shared. Just further utilizing what is being done, there's so many good examples that of, of what people are doing far and wide uh, within Canada, within North America, or Mishikam and Nissing and Anishkagi Mikwe throughout the world, you know, where we're we're not just talking about it or utilizing the theories and the philosophies of, of it, but we're putting it into practice. So experiential learning, you know, would be, uh, would be an avenue where bringing people together to experience things and, you know, bringing, restoring some of those uh, practices that uh, all the cultures would have and knowledge sharing and, and having that opportunity to share, you know, those narratives from, and those no ways of knowing and knowledge is learning processes of knowing, you know, that that people have uh, in, in the diversity throughout uh, our, our territories, throughout our, our, uh, our regions or throughout our world as well. And there's, there's opportunities that are happening where people are engaging that way. Um, the one that I would, you know, for myself, where I would like to learn more is, you know, on the land and uh, with individuals who, you know, have the time and the energy and who are honored to come out and, and do some of that instruction and teaching, uh, experiential type learning getting outside of the classroom. I know there is use and need to utilize classroom setting, uh, but I always find opportunity in, in the work that I do is to take the students to get out of the classroom because in, in my experience and the way many of my teachers have taught me and even within my own family, you know, it's better to see it in action, you know. It's uh, really good to see it and experience it, you know, in those moments, in those places. Uh, rather than just talking about those places or talking about those experiences to really, you know, get get those those hands uh, and and those those eyes and those senses right connected to it, and uh, I remember a thing. My the reason why I really would stand by that idea is, you know, my great grandpa who gave me my name. Uh, you know, he was a very old old. Uh, old man and uh, the pillar in my life and you know uh, growing up I was a little bit anxious and I had I talked to him one time and I said you know what am I going to do when you're gone you know like I'm not going to have uh, this type of knowledge base you know I'm not going to have you uh, I know for my entire life but I know there's going to be times in my life where, where I'm going to want to have you in my life and uh, he, he looked at me and he says, well, you, you, you will always have a teacher because where do you think our knowledge came from? Where do you think our language came from? You 
know, and he said, that's where you go, as you go to where, where our, our knowledge and our traditions, where our practices all came from, where they've been informed from. And I didn't always understand what he meant when he said, you go to the source of that knowledge, you know, and, and so I, it, I didn't understand it till later where, you know, when going out to the land and taking that time to interact with the land, sometimes in solitude, uh, individually or sometimes with other individuals who are able, you know, to do some of that translation and, and facilitation of, uh, of knowing what we're seeing when, we, when we're on the land and knowing what those experiences are, as well as all the, the reinforcement of, of the different tools that we utilize, whether it be uh, cultural knowledge and practices and ceremonies or the way we would uh, build a rapport and approach uh, all of creation that's what he was talking about and and it's within that term of uh, Akinomo Shin is that the lands and the resources and creation is there uh, and, and is communicating it kind of sounds weird uh, but they're exposing uh, the knowledge that they have and, and through a rapport and through a connection then uh, we begin to build understanding about what we're seeing and, and the whether it be you know the way an ecosystem or the way entities within an environment uh, govern and establish uh, their their relationships and work collectively together or in a cycle uh, over a time and over an evolutionary process, and uh, we we are uh, affected by that as uh, people or as individuals who are uh, living amongst uh, creation like that. So. You know, it really made sense to me uh, and, and what I sort of hold dear and, and the way I like to facilitate uh, uh, my classroom or, or any knowledge I'm trying to share is, you know, I would utilize my own experiences, my own uh, narratives, uh, as well as the way I envision it in my mind. Uh, so I, I utilize movement and I utilize other people's diverse experiences and try and facilitate uh, sharing those experiences and, and uh, the way other people are connecting to ideas on philosophies and sciences uh, and understandings and, and then, then experiential learning. So using every kind of uh, possible method I can to uh, give us, give individuals every view of, of uh, what we're experiencing or what we're seeing and, and what our responsibility would be or, or what the learning would be. So yeah, I, I would say any, every resource possible and, and individual in the work that they're doing and, and even for myself, like I, I you know, try and uh, make relationships with other educators who are doing some very amazing work and facilitating in a very innovative and creative way, uh, you know, and, and it helps me also get over some of my own shyness to, you know, be uh, expressive or uh, to utilize movement or to utilize song, to utilize Nishnabemo and, and uh, to speak the language more and to utilize it within my every, every day and to not... Uh, you know, be so shy to utilize all those, you know, very kind of, uh, I guess, uh, putting yourself out there kind of methods. So, yeah, it kind of, uh, you know, even though I'm not a, a, a singer or a dancer or a, uh, you know, a, an actor of any sense, uh, that there's, there's very different uh, methods that are being used that help embody knowledge and utilize knowledge where it's not just something that is external from the student or from the learner. It's something that they utilize physically, mentally, emotionally, and energy-wise uh, and, and embody that idea of Deb uh, win is that it's uh, the truth becomes fully visible on the person. That's the way I would sort of describe that term in, in an idea is that can't really hide it because it radiates from the person and, and everything that they do and you can see it it's uh it's it's conducive uh within everything that they do or it informs everything that they do 
they become conductors of how creation exists within them or how they interact with creation and, and hopefully being reciprocal and uh, minding their responsibility to, to sharing uh, or to give back or to uh, sharing what they know with other people. So.